I was flipping channels and I was passed by the Meredith Vieira show and they had Tia Maori on there and she made a statement that pretty much I thought was pretty disturbing and when she on the show she was showing a picture of her son on Facebook with his hair in what looked like to be a bit of a ponytail and she said she was getting a lot of heat um, regarding the way the boy's hair was done and she said we shouldn't assign gender roles to things and what made this disturbing is Tia Maori is a Christian and how can you say we shouldn't assign gender roles to things and be a Christian that's a total contradiction if you really think about it because God assigns gender roles and he made male and female you can just go to the Old Testament or you can go to what Jesus said in the New Testament he pretty much says that there are male and female now Ms. Maori goes on to say that you know samurais had top knot ponytails well here we are talking about a black male in 2015 and what Miss Maori probably doesn't know or because she lives in Hollywood and has been you know indoctrinated into this dysfunctional white liberal narrative is that there's an ongoing quest to effeminize the image of the african-american man and when you put images like this on facebook all it does is add fuel to the fire and reinforce you know more of these images that are being perpetuated because most of these images regarding black men are pretty much they're effeminized and if you look at any image that comes out of hollywood it's effeminate and the sad part is we have a christian reinforcing this now i don't know if, if Ms. Maori has read her Bible most recently or understands, you know, the Word of God, but when you say that, you know, we shouldn't assign gender roles to things, that's saying that, you know, really, you really need, really need to go back to your Bible because, again, God assigns gender roles to things. He created male and female. He created this as part of his natural order. He wants men, you know, to be the leaders and the head of the family. When I listen to this statement, it shows me that, you know, her son is being taught a culture that is detrimental to him because when you're taught that not to assign gender roles to things, it's, it's, it's like you're going to be on a slippery slope because this is why we wind up with black males who are soft and weak, buttermilk, biscuit, effeminate brothers who don't know how to be men and they don't know how to function in the world as men because their mothers have taught them dysfunctional ideologies and dysfunctional cultures from Madison Avenue and Hollywood movie studios that tell them, you know, things that are totally detrimental to them and completely outside the order of God because as I see it, God's natural order is not going to be broken. And, you know, you can try you can you can be raised in this effeminate way, but all you're gonna do is wind up hitting your hitting against the wall of life because the way the world works, the way God has made the world work is 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 always going to be that way and this is why a lot of these black men you know they can't function because their mothers teach them a culture from that that Trump that was created by white liberals and white feminists in order to teach them to tolerate and accept things that God does not accept and this is why these boys wind up completely dysfunctional and completely lost I mean yeah you want to put your if you want to dress I mean the way I look at it I mean, yeah, this, you want to put, you want to dress your boy up, you're going to mess him up. And this boy needs to be taught, you know, manhood. And this is where his father needs to come in, you know, and, you know, check this. And this is what black men, you know, a lot of black men are too afraid to do. But I'm not afraid to do it. I mean, if I, if I had a son and I saw, him, saw his mother doing this to him, I would have to take her to the side and talk to her and say, look, we're going to have to do something about, we're going to have to take this boy to go to the barbershop, you know, Get, let him go through this rite of passage and let him learn, you know, what it means to be a man. Because that's where it comes in. Because that's what my, well, my, I remember my mother telling me stories about, you know, things that she would do with my hair back in the day. And then, you know, eventually, you know, my dad took me to go get a haircut. And he took me to get haircuts until I was about 13 years old. And, you know, we would go to this bar, he would drive me, he would drive all the way to 145th Street and this barbershop on Frederick Douglass Boulevard. Um, where he would go to get his haircut, and he took me to get my haircut there. And I remember the barber's name was Blood back in the day. Um, but that was a rite of passage for me, and that was how, you know, I learned about, how part of what I learned about being a man. Now, when I look at this boy, you know, his hair is all, you know, pulled up in his, pulled up like a ponytail, and his mother's, 
you know, justifying it, and she says she's a Christian, this, this is something that, you know, is a, was really dysfunctional. It really, really shows, you know, an example of this dysfunctional Negro Christianity. Um, but a man who follows God is going to say, look, can't have my boy, you know, acting like this or presented like this, especially in an image like this. Um, I need to check this and get this boy on the road to manhood, even at two or three years old. This is something that you just have to come in and correct as a father, because this is what fathers do. Um, because you want to raise your boy to become a man, you want to raise him to be a strong man, you know, a man who is ready to take the leadership role God has established for him. And this is the way men are supposed to be raised, but I'm looking at this generation, um, it's pretty sad. I mean, you have a woman teaching her boy a culture at, at two or three years old that's pretty much going to derail his life later on, like this poor, dysfunctional Jaden Smith who pretty much, you know, he's pretty much a wreck. Um, because Jaden Smith's sitting up there talking about, I like to wear a dress. This is something that, you know, a father needs to come in and check and say, look, you can't be acting like this. This is effeminate behavior. This is dysfunctional. Um, you're a man and you're supposed to act like a man. I mean, God, again, made male and female and he wants people, if he created you for a gender role, it, for this gender, he wants you to be a part of that gender. And there is nothing wrong with that. The whole thing is we have these liberals who want to come in and nowadays talk about this whole, you know, there are no genders, um, every, anything goes, um, it could be male, males and females, it doesn't, there's no such thing as males and females, and that truly is a work of the devil, because again, God made male and female, and, after, and to a point, you know, when a man marries a woman, he's supposed to go and have his family on his own, that's what God made those gender roles to be. But when I listen to this, again, it sounds like, you know, more of this Madison Avenue, Hollywood, um, social engineering that is meant to really make black men dysfunctional. Because here we have a mother telling us that, you know, that we shouldn't assign gender roles to things. And the sad part is we have, we have this Christian woman saying this and not, you know, thinking about what she's saying and how it impacts an entire community of black men because I've, I've just seen you know over the last 15 20 years this total campaign to effeminize these black men and I'm seeing black men becoming more and more you know feminine because of all this media they're imbibing and all these ideas that are being reinforced and these black men are, are, are just completely confused these black men have no idea you know even how to navigate life because their mothers are teaching them things that that just don't work within God's natural order. And when you look go to God's natural order, you will see, you know, when you follow it, it's going you're going to be right. You're going to be able to function. You're going to be able to, you know, navigate life. But when you look at these black men, they they can't get anything to go because they're trying to do things from a feminine perspective and they're trying to to approach life from a female perspective and the world is wanting them to work from a male perspective. And because they, because they have been taught and shamed into believing that the male perspective is wrong, they wind up, you know, lost and confused. Again, trying to put square pegs into round holes and, you know, not getting the best out of life that God has for them because they are being, you know, taught a way of life that is completely contradictory to what God has established. I mean, this book right here will teach your boys how to become men is part of you know manhood and this is what the role of the father is his role is to take the lead and you know control and manage his family and lead his family so that they don't wind up you know confused I mean to say that there are that we shouldn't assign gender roles to things I'm sorry that's that's outside of the order of God and that's something that you know needs to be checked whenever you hear this type of information misinformation because there there are gender roles, and God assigns gender roles to things, and he does not want women wearing and doing things pertaining to a man, and he doesn't want men wearing and wearing things that are pertaining to a woman. It's just, it's just, that's just considered unnatural. It's considered, you know, I mean, it's a sin, and it's something that just needs, you know, to be corrected, because I see this social engineering campaign, and I don't know if Ms. Maori's aware of it, um, that's why I'm not going in hard on her in this video, because 
I, I've seen too many images of African American men over the last 15 years that are completely effeminate. And I've seen this whole culture to effeminize this black man. And most people are just sitting there, you know, because most women, they think it's cute to have their boy, you know, wearing a dress or to have his hair in a ponytail or to have his hair all long. They think it's cute. I, I, I don't think it's cute at all because these boys are being taken on a road that is destructive to them at, at when they grow up to become men. They're not learning the way, you know, how to function in life. And then they wind up, as I've stated, you know, numerous times in this video, they wind up confused to their male identity. They wind up unable to function as men. And they wind up, you know, again, completely lost. Um, and wind up these being the kind of guys I ran into in junior high school and high school, you know, who would, will, will ask all sorts of dysfunctional questions and do things like being gossipy and being catty and being interested in shoes rather than being interested in getting good grades and working towards building businesses and enterprise and doing the things that men do. And there, and everyone had, just has to understand, God made male, he made female, and he, and he made those roles and he made them to each have value because both work interdependently within his natural order towards maintaining the earth and everything that he makes is good so everybody needs to understand that you know black manhood is has a value in God's natural order and we should not find ways to dismiss it or discount it there there is something significant to black manhood and we need to make efforts to protect and preserve black manhood that's all I have to say for this video you can comment rate and subscribe